Russia's vast stocks of Soviet-era weaponry are running out, according to The Economist's analysis. For a long time, it seemed that a war of attrition between Ukraine and a Russia with five times its population could only end one way. But the much-vaunted Russian offensive against Kharkiv in the north that started in May is fizzling out. Its advances elsewhere along the line, especially in the Donbass region, have been both strategically trivial and achieved only at huge cost. The question now is less whether Ukraine can stay in the fight and more how long can Russia maintain its current tempo of operations. The key issue is not manpower. Russia seems able to go on finding another 25,000 or so soldiers each month to maintain numbers at the front of around 470,000, although it is paying more for them. Production of missiles to strike Ukrainian infrastructure is also surging. But for all the talk about Russia having become a war economy, with some 8% of its GDP devoted to military spending, it is able to replace its staggering losses of tanks, armored infantry vehicles and artillery only by drawing out of storage and refurbishing stocks built up in the Soviet era. Huge though these stocks are, they are not infinite. According to most intelligence estimates, after the first two years of the war, Russia had lost about 3,000 tanks and 5,000 other armored vehicles. Oryx, a Dutch open source intelligence site, puts the number of Russian tank losses for which it has either photo or videographic evidence currently at 3,235, but suggests the actual number is significantly higher. Alexander Goltz, an analyst at the Stockholm Center for Eastern European Studies, says that Vladimir Putin has the old Politburo to thank for the huge stockpiles of weapons that were built up during the Cold War. When the then Defense Minister, Sergei Shoigu, boasted in December 2023 that 1,530 tanks had been delivered in the course of the year, he omitted to say that nearly 85% of them, according to an assessment by the International Institute for Strategic Studies, a London think tank, were not new tanks but old ones mainly T-72s, also T-62s, and even some T-55s dating from just after the Second World War that had been taken out of storage and given a wash and brush up. Since the invasion, about 175 reasonably modern T-90M tanks have been sent to the front line. The IISS estimates that annual production this year could be approaching 90. However, Michael Gerstad, an analyst with the IISS, argues that most of the T-90Ms are actually upgrades of older T-90As. As those numbers dwindle, production of newly built T-90Ms this year might be no more than 28. Another major concern is artillery barrel production. For now, with the help of North Korea, Russia appears to have enough shells, probably about three millions this year, sufficient to outgun the Ukrainians until recently by at least 5.1, and sometimes by much more. But the downside of such high rates of fire has been the wear and tear on barrels. In some highly contested areas, the barrels of howitzers need replacing after only a few months. Analysts cited by The Economist reckon that at current rates of attrition, Russian tank and infantry vehicle refurbishment from storage will have reached a critical point of exhaustion by the second half of next year. Unless something changes, before the end of this year, Russian forces may have to adjust their posture to one that is much more defensive, says Mr. Gierstadt. It could even become apparent before the end of summer. Expect Mr. Putin's interest in agreeing a temporary ceasefire to increase. Let's see the other events. Mother of a captured Russian occupier says Russia did not invade Ukraine and is not waging war. I urge you to listen to this conversation. It is very telling of how the Russians see this war.
Uh, хорошо, вопрос такого характера. А если не было вторжения, что ваш сын здесь вообще делает? Ну, вы его спросите. Я его туда не отправляла. Нет, так я понял, что вы не отправляли. Но если Россия не вторгалась в Украину и не ведет никакую войну, то что ваш сын в составе российской армии здесь делает? И что здесь делает российская армия, в которой был ваш сын? Я политикой не занимаюсь. Так не занимайтесь политикой, я же простой вопрос занимаю, ну, задаю. Э -э зачем Россия вторглась в Украину и ведет захватническую Мне войну? Никто не того, что вы такие глупые вопросы задаете. Вы считаете, что нам тут политинформацию ведут? Нет, но ваш сын здесь, на территории Украины, он мог погибнуть. Но он не на территории Украины. Это он сейчас находится на территории Украины. А воевал он где? А воевал он где? Донецкая Народная Республика. Она, как неизвестно, присоединена к российской. Это, 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 это по, по, по вашим меркам там она присоединена, но никто в мире этого не признал, от этого присоединения того первого. Ну, а а во-вторых, он, а во он был под Харьковом, это вообще не Донецкая область. Он... Это вы так сказали, а я же не знаю. Нет, под Харьковом не был. Нет, под Харьков так привезли. в Харьков привезли? Так, госпиталь, да. А где, в каком населенном пункте был? А я даже не знаю. Ну, я же его спрашивал, сказал, да не знаю. знаю. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Occupational authorities of Luhansk demolished a memorial dedicated to the victims of Stalin's era repressions placed there in 1990. It was on the spot where mass burial was discovered, including of women and children murdered by the Soviet regime. The authorities alleged that it was installed by nationalist authorities, which is not the case. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.